Today we're going to discuss uh, trace minerals and the breeding season and really evaluate you know, how and what can we do to get cattle truly breed ready from a trace mineral perspective. I think fundamentally in any breeding season timing is truly a critical, critical, critical concept to understand. Because with every cow or heifer, we truly have only one breeding season per year. Uh, and if we miss that, we, we inevitably end up with everything being out of kilter. So it is really truly important that we have as many of those heifers or cows conceive in that breeding season. And actually, it is significantly preferential if they would conceive early in that breeding season. It has significant advantages, which we'll discuss later. Uh, and I think when we look at cows and heifers, it actually starts ahead of the breeding season. So we actually need to pay attention to these animals, you know, a minimum of 30 days before we start breeding them. With a bull, it's actually a little further even because we need to pay attention to this bull 45 to 60 days before breeding. Because if we look at the production of sperm in this bull, we actually have that happen, you know, 60 to 63 days before we turn that bull out. Now, at the same time, when we discuss uh, the actual breeding season, we need to recognize that most cows and heifers are going to have calves with them uh, that are going to be within that 60 to 90 day old age window. And we're approaching the first calf food vaccination with those animals. So just be aware that these animals are also uh, something we need to really bear in mind. What is the the actual trace mineral status of this animal, and is it wise to put a vaccine into this animal without supplementing it? Well, it is not. So when we just discuss uh, trace minerals with the breeding females, there's a couple of reasons why we're seeing issues approaching a breeding season. So from a cow perspective, the cows really have uh, significantly decreased their mineral status because of a couple of normal physiological things that have happened. Well, number one is they had a pregnancy, and if they gave you a good quality calf, it means that they had depleted their mineral status to really supplement and give you a good quality calf. Now, unfortunately, after calving, the cow has a couple of major changes that will happen to her as well. Number one is she has to shed the afterbirth, and number two, she has to involute the uterus and get herself ready for the next pregnancy. So, unfortunately, there's a lot of mineral uh, going into that process. And then thirdly, that cow had to start a, a whole lactation. She was not producing milk and now she's producing milk. And on top of that, she had to produce really good quality colostrum up front, which had a lot of nutrients and a lot of antibodies in it. So these are all really mineral expensive efforts that she's gone through. Now, heifers have exactly that same issue. However, they have one additional thing that's added on top of that. And that's the fact that they are actually still growing themselves. So these heifers are actually still growing, so they have an additional requirement uh, for trace mineral after that uh, first calf. And I think one of the, the real uh, things that we all pursue as cattlemen is to try and get our calving season as compressed as possible. Because if we could get as many calves burn, uh, born early in that calving season, it has several advantages. The first one being, if we could get more calves born, you know, just moving them, backing them up 20 days earlier, at about two to two and a half pounds per head per day, you know, we're looking at 40, 40 pounds that we can market additionally come weaning time. So there's a definite fun financial advantage uh, to backing up and, you know, compressing that calving season. But on top of that, if we could get a cow to conceive early, we're allowing her additional time to regain body condition score and fill up on mineral reserves. So the better we can do this, the, actually the better our chance of that cow conceiving the following breeding season is. So just be, uh, just bear that in mind. And I want to refer you to, uh, you know, we have some really good data to explain how do we build multi-men uh, into a cow-calf operation to actually assist uh, in compressing this calving season. So when we look at the product, what are we actually administering to these animals? We're administering zinc, selenium, copper, and manganese uh, in accordance with, with NRC uh, published data. So I just want to highlight a couple of things. Uh, you know, we're putting zinc and copper in at a four to one ratio. Uh, and I, I would like for people to just bear that in mind. When you look at your supplementation program, 
just make sure that uh, you know you're putting zinc and copper in there at a three to four to one ratio uh, so that we don't cause another imbalance uh, and I think that 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 is a is a pretty important uh, point why do we actually use the Multima 90 as an injectable why didn't we just formulate a different oral compound and I think there's really uh, you know three really significant uh, differences that the route of administration actually offers to you. The first one is the rapidity at which we supplement. So if you look at the injectable by putting it through the needle, we can actually have the maximum uh, blood level increase within eight hours after injecting that animal. And then secondly, whatever the animal doesn't use at that point in time, within 24 hours, we actually see liver levels uh, increasing and that is then available for that animal to use over time. A second major advantage of using the injectable is we have no antagonistic interference. So if you, whether you have iron, molybdenum, sulfur additional into your, some of your supplements or your pasture or your water, that has no impact on the amount of mineral we drive into the animal through the needle because we bypass the gut completely and all of the mineral that we inject is available to that animal systemically. We bypass the antagonists completely. A very important issue is that we actually treat every animal that we inject. So every animal that we inject is supplemented. It is not something that they have the choice to go to a bunk and consume it. It's not something that they have a choice. When we, ha when we restrain them and we inject them, they are supplemented, it's done. Uh, a further advantage on, on, on doing the injectable is we can actually time when we give it. So we can give it when they actually need it. So from a pre-breeding perspective, if we can get in there 30 days before the breeding season starts, we can ensure two things. Number one is that we actually uh, address the, the early development of the, the egg that's going to be fertilized. And we also address that early embryo survivability from a copper, zinc, selenium, and manganese point of view. So a couple of things that, uh, you know, we say that, you know, th these are things that people like to pussyfoot around and they don't want to discuss it. Uh, I think fundamentally, if you look at the Multiman product, we have no fight with feed companies. Uh, feed companies are essential to produce uh, good quality supplements that need to be kept in front of animals all the time. But unfortunately, there are certain things that cattle do which make them uh, uh, less efficient. And uh, one of the major problems that we deal with is the variability in uh, trace mineral intake from an uh, oral uh, supplement point of view. We see a couple of different things. We see, number one, firstly, that there is variation amongst the animals. So some cows are just going to eat a lot of it. Some cows are not going to touch it. And some of the others are going to be all, you know, all over that. You know, if we have a target of four ounces per head per day, we're going to have some that are going to be two, some that are going to be one, some that are going to be four ounces. So there's significant variability in how they consume that. Now, this variability is also compounded by what they have access to in conjunction with that supplement. So if we have rain and we all of a sudden have spring flush and we have a lot of green pasture, cows are going to spend more time consuming green grass, then they're going to consume your oral mineral supply. It's nothing to do with a feed company, nothing to do with the quality of the product that they put out there. It's all got to do with cow and calf behavior. That calf in that first 90 days, what is it living on? It's living on milk. So the consumption of that calf is going to be 90% milk and it's going to nibble at a couple of things, but it's not going to intake a lot of mineral or supplement. Then something else that plays a significant role and it drives actually back to intake, is how stressed cattle behave. So when we put cattle through a chute, their intake is going to depress for a day or two. If we have a cow or a heifer that's ready to calf, they're going to have reduced intake for at least a 7 to 10 day period. They're not going to eat as much as we need them to do. So just be aware that stressed cattle also have a reduction uh, in intake. And then I think that, you know, a very important thing is that we actually have uh, increased trace mineral demand at certain points. If we look at a breeding cow or a heifer, as she approaches calving, one of the fundamental things is that in the last 90 days of gestation, that cow or heifer is going to be as a utmost priority be transferring mineral into that unborn calf. 
she's setting it up for the first 90 days because cow's milk just doesn't have a lot of mineral in it. So one thing we need to recognize is that during that period of time approaching calving, that, calf, that cow is actually depleting her own reserves and you know they're not going to eat more it's just simply because they're uh, depleting their reserves now unfortunately the second area of higher demand is in that window between calving and breeding because we have a very short period of time of about 90 days where we have to actually repair that cow and make sure that she has enough mineral to have a good cycle and really maintain the uh, survivability of that embryo so you know, the strategic in injection of multimen before that breeding season can really help support the trace mineral status uh, of those uh, breeding animals. Then I just want to kind of, you know, we, we discussed this uh, early cat food vaccination uh, early on, and I just want to highlight why it's really important to inject these calves at branding or first vaccination, because unfortunately, you know, from birth uh, to 60 to 90 days of age, they're more than double in weight, uh, and you know all of that growth in tissue, muscle, bone, is heavy on mineral, and they're drinking milk, which is poor in mineral. So what they do over that period of time is they actually move their mineral status from very high at birth to low. And unfortunately, what we're going to do now is we're going to put a, a vaccine into that calf and expect it to mount a good response. And very often what happens is we actually take the, the calf, you know, it's grown from here to here. Now we put a vaccine into it, we drop it further, and then two weeks later they get sick and people are really disappointed. What's wrong with the vaccine? It's not, nothing wrong with the vaccine. We started with a calf that wasn't prepared to deal with that vaccine. So you got a really poor vaccination response, but you dropped the mineral status as well. So we really set it up. Once it got challenged, it got really sick because... Well, it didn't have enough mineral to support the immune system in any case, and the actual vaccine response wasn't great either. So just bear that in mind that, you know, milk does not contain uh, sufficient trace minerals uh, to actually help these calves. And, you know, trace minerals are critical even in the innate immune response for, for young calves. You know, if you will look at the calf developing scours in that first two to three weeks, it is maybe because the cow did not transfer enough mineral into that calf because really what is fighting that disease in the first two, three weeks of life? It's the innate immune system. It's the cells that is God given to those calves that are circulating and they've got to fight the infection. So if we don't have enough selenium, well, they can't do their job. If we don't have enough copper, zinc or manganese, they can't do their job. So just be aware that early on in the calf's life, it really relies on a lot of the mineral that it got from the cow to fight those infections. Then this goes back to that very young calf. Uh, we have actually done a couple of studies looking at, you know, if we then do supply multimen at the same time as a vaccine, what, what do you get? You know, what, what does a producer get for employing the multimen at the same time as a vaccine? The first one is we actually get an improvement in the vaccine response in two different ways. We get that these calves actually respond to the vaccine a little quicker and the measurable antibodies or cell mediated immunity is slightly higher so you get a little more bang for your buck but the second thing that we also see is we actually get more of these calves that respond to the vaccine in a group so if we vaccinate 20 or 30 or 40 calves we actually get more of them to respond to that vaccine when we give the vaccine if we give multiman at the same time and that's really beneficial because uh, it, it actually decreases transmission rate because if we've got more vaccinated, more of that responded, there's fewer of them that'll get, that'll get sick. And I think, uh, you know, one of the most beneficial things that we've done is we've actually done research to look at, uh, so what happens when we make them sick? Because when we vaccinate an animal, it doesn't prevent them from getting the infection. You know, it just actually changes the outcome of the disease. So we've done some work uh, and, and we found that you get less clinical signs. They just simply don't get as sick as they would by just giving them the vaccine. Now, it's not necessarily that they just had a better vaccine response. You must understand that these minerals also help tissue integrity. So we actually have healthier mucous membranes and all of those things. So when we make them sick, they actually have a better body to respond to the, to the vaccine. 
something on the very, very young calf, you know, if we rely really on just the innate immune system, the natural cells that it has, uh, we've done some work on, on early calf food uh, use of multimin, uh, where we've seen, uh, you know, some really beneficial impacts on incidence of scour rate and also incidence of pneumonia and ear infections. I think just kind of taking a breath and stepping over to the bull, uh, because very often we overlook the bull because there are not as many of them in the herd as there are cows, but actually they're slightly more important because if we look at the bull, the bull will actually sire multiple calves. So it's really important that we pay attention to the bull. And I think, you know, just to, to kind of look at why are these trace minerals critical in, in bulls, Number one is if we're talking about young bulls, we need to be very clear on uh, sexual development and actually the reaching of puberty. Because if these bulls do not reach puberty at an adequate age and it's delayed, we're going to have an awesome amount of difficulty in, uh, in actually having these bulls uh, you know, become available for sale. Then uh, secondly, these trace minerals really play a key role in sperm motility and morphology. So it's really the package that we're going to utilize uh, to perform fertilization in the cow is impacted significantly uh, by trace minerals as well. And there are several reasons why uh, we, you know, we may see significant issues on the bull side. The first one is variation in dry matter intake, which obviously limits their trace mineral intake. When you open that gate for a bull to start the breeding season, uh, eating a full you know, balanced ration all day, every day, is one of the last things on his mind. He's there to work. You know, bulls are very much like all bovine. They're exposed to poor absorption rate of trace minerals. You know, we're talking at best 30% with selenium. You know, manganese, we're talking 1%, copper 5%, zinc maybe 15, 20%. So, so the intestinal absorption rates of these things are not great. And then, you know, once we put a bull with a cow, he's exposed to exactly the same antagonist that they're exposed to you know, we're talking sulfur, we're talking molybdenum and iron. So just bear that in mind, you know, that the bull, although we only use him for a very, you know, maybe a, a limited time in the year, uh, they're exposed to exactly the same issues as cows. So by injecting the multimin, what can we do with these bulls? We actually can elevate these uh, trace minerals uh, at significantly important times. You know, we can actually coincided with a predicted onset of puberty, and we can actually make sure that once they start producing semen, they actually produce decent quality semen. So we can definitely time it to use it at that time point. We can also time it when breeding soundness examinations are done. Uh, you know, most people trick test and do a semen test on bulls, and just be aware, you know, this is the one time that you're gonna have the bull constrained to take the semen sample. It's an ideal opportunity to inject the multimin because very shortly thereafter that bull is going to be used in a breeding season and if you remember uh, our time point on using it in a bull you know is that 45 to 60 days before we start using that bull so this is a real opportune time uh, to put multimin in there you know and we've we've spoken about this where you know semen production cycle takes about 60 63 days uh, to develop that sperm so again this is a really really good time point uh, to administer the multimin in a breeding bull. And I just want to make two comments on uh, a study that was conducted uh, at Galen Fink's uh, Fink Beef Genetics in Randolph, Kansas, uh, you know, where we put a really nice big number. It was about just short of 500 bulls enrolled in the study. And the multimin bulls, he had 3% more bulls pass the yearling breeding test and be ready for sale. Now, this 3% doesn't really look really impressive to me, does it now? But if you do a full economic analysis on what was the actual dollar return on that, if we look at his net return, uh, which actually uh, we've taken off the cost of the multimin and we've taken off labor because we paid people three bucks a bull to inject it twice. So the cost of multimin and two injection uh, labor costs have been taken off and his net return was $72.93 a bull. Now that is a, it's, it's a pretty handsome return if you're a young, uh, somebody that develops young bulls. So, uh, you know, the study is available if anybody wants to have a look at that. So in conclusion, how do we use this product? I think fundamentally first and foremost is we follow BQA principles. So we actually inject this product only sub-Q 
in the neck region of cattle. Uh, second point is on dosage recommendations, uh, just follow the label very, very closely on dosage recommendations. Do never ever exceed the dosage rate on this uh, product. Uh, the label is very clear and we have, uh, you know, a significant uh, number of different opportunities on how to use this product, but you will see that they are all coinciding with time points where animals have a greater need. And uh, just follow the label and you're welcome to ask for the data on any of these uh, suggested uh, usage times and we'll gladly you know, supply that information. I think just as a final comment, uh, if you uh, need any information, you can go to our website, multimanusa.com and uh, you, know, you can access our sales staff there uh, and you're welcome to call any of them for more information. And finally, uh, I would also like you to, you know, if you have the, the time, uh, visit the website www.cattlebreedready.com and you can see, uh, you know, just additional information on this, just focusing uh, on the breeding of cattle. Thank you very much.